What's up everybody? This is Chris here from East Coast PC and welcome back to the channel. Thank everybody who has already got subscribed. Thank everybody for watching all the videos, for the comments, the prayers for my grandfather and everything else. And before we get started, please, if there's anybody that is not subscribed, please make sure y'all get subscribed. You don't know how much it helps us. We greatly appreciate all the subscribers, all the support, all the views. We appreciate it so much. So thanks again, you guys, for that. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, y'all. So today we have some very exciting news pertaining to Intel's 12th generation core lineup. This article is coming as an exclusive from videocards.com, and I'll be putting in, putting it up on the screen there. But uh, the basically, this is the first time that I'm aware of that we have had a diagram, a picture diagram of the actual Outer Lake architecture. The 12th generation core series is gonna be codenamed Outer Lake. And they are touting a 20% single threaded performance improvement. Now, it does not say specifically if that tw if the 20% is from Sky Lake or Willow Cove, or it, do it does not really say, but uh, I am guessing that it is 20% IPC increase over Rocket Lake. So that is some very exciting news. Uh, at the beginning, when we, when I first started hearing rumors about this new hybrid architecture, we're going to talk about that in a, a little bit, but I was very, you know, kind of down on it. I was like, you know, why do we want a big little system uh, into, you know, computers that we're building high performance gaming and editing computers with? You know, that, that's great for phones and stuff, you know, where you're trying to conserve battery life. But I, I just, at the time, I did not see it as a viable making sense option on in the desktop pc space but as more and more and more leaks have came out i have started to change my tone about that a little bit it's starting to look really interesting so along with that what we also have is we got up to two times the multi-threaded performance we have new grace mock cores which is going to be their second generation small cores as you call them and we have something else called hardware guided scheduling so the grace mock cores are the successor for the tray mock cores they were never used in any desktop processor they were basically for like little tablets and stuff it was basically just a experiment kind of thing it, it, they weren't hugely popular or nothing they, they were available for retail it, it just wasn't uh just wasn't a huge thing it was like i said kind of like an experiment so the way this architecture is going to work we're going to have eight big cores and eight small cores the eight big cores, the Golden Cove cores, they're the ones that they're touting 20% single threaded performance IPC increase. So they are gonna be hyper threaded. You're gonna have eight big hyper threaded cores. So eight cores and 16 threads on that one. And then we are gonna have eight small cores. They are not gonna be hyper threaded. Now, this article uh, does not say nothing about this specific thing that I'm about to say, but what I have also been hearing in the industry is that those small cores, the, the uh, Grace Mont cores, they are going to have roughly, from what I've heard, they're going to have roughly the same IPC as Skylake, which is absolutely incredible. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to be as fast as Skylake because they are small cores. So we do know one thing, they're, I mean, it would just make sense. They're definitely not going to be clocked nearly as high as the big cores. Uh, if they were clocked as high as the big cores, uh, from the leaks that we're hearing, they should be as powerful as Skylake IPC wise. So even though they're going to be clocked lower, to know that they have small cores now that are as powerful as Skylake, that is really, really exciting. I'm hearing that uh, with all of these cores working together, that the eight cores, 16 threads, the big Golden Cove cores, and the eight small Grace Mont cores, I am hearing is going to be roughly on par with the Ryzen 9 5900X in multi-threaded performance. We don't know, we'll just have to wait and see there, but we're gonna keep talking about all, all the other improvements. So one of the biggest new features is PCI Gen 5. Now, a lot of people in the comments on this article, people are just roasting it, Intel, it just seems like at this point. They have had a bad little stretch, uh, but it does seem like they are really gearing up for a good run over the next three or four years, and I'm very excited to see them come back. We need we need both companies to do good, so us as consumer get low prices. If if one company's doing terrible like AMD was for years, uh, and Intel's dominating, prices are going to be high, and there's just not going to be much innovation. So. Uh, Rocket Lake that's launching 
uh, and was launching now as we speak, the 11th gen core lineup is Intel's first processors with PCI Gen 4, which is gonna be partially short lived because in 12th generation Outer Lake, we have now learned that we are going to a combination of PCI Generation 5 and PCI Generation 4. Uh, from this picture that we got leaked from videocards.com, it appears that we are going to have 16 PCI Generation 5, uh, yeah, excuse me, 16 PCI Generation 5 lanes for your graphics card, and we're going to have four PCI Generation 4 lanes for your uh, primary M.2 storage drive. So the M.2 storage, which could really benefit from PCI Generation 5 when new Gen 5 drives come out, unfortunately, uh, this processor is not going to be compatible with that, but uh, from what I'm hearing, the first Gen 5 drives are not going to come out until the second half of 2022. And the, having the PCI Express 5.0 for your graphics card is definitely something nice to have. That way we can grow into it for many years in the in platform, especially if it ends up being a really good architecture and a platform. It's just nice to have. Now also, uh, on the chipset side, we are supposed to get uh, support for PCI Express 4.0 lanes and PCI Express 3.0 lanes. From what this is showing, it does not show how many of each one, but it is showing that we should have a combination of Gen 4 lanes and Gen 3 lanes on the chipset, which is an improvement because uh, even Rocket Lake is only PCI Gen 3. Also, on uh, as far as memory goes, we have support for DDR4 and DDR5. This is gonna be, to, uh, to my knowledge anyway, the first uh, consumer platform to support DDR5. That's very exciting. It brings, it's gonna bring a lot more advantages, capacities, or you're just gonna be able to put so much more memory capacity on a mainstream platform and speeds from, from what we're looking at. I've already seen rumors of people uh, planning to make DDR5 early on up to uh, speeds of 8,400 mega transfers. So that is very exciting. The reason they do this to DDR4 and DDR5 is because since DDR5 is so new, uh, obviously there's not gonna be as much of it. It's gonna be harder to get your hands on. It's probably gonna be expensive and you, you already know where this conversation is going. So, but that way they give motherboard manufacturers an option of supporting DDR4. So it just, it helps the consumer out in a lot of ways. You might already have some, or it might just be more convenient for you or cheaper for you to buy DDR4. However, I do think that this architecture will probably perform way better with DDR5. And another thing is we have Intel Wi-Fi 6E and Thunderbolt 4 support, of course. And paired with that, that is uh, all together, all the stuff we just talked about is Intel 12th Gen Outer Lake is gearing up to be a very exciting ar architecture. Let me know in the comments what you guys think below. A lot of people are, uh, like I said earlier, are, are really just downing Intel. They are, people are just roasting Intel and it, and it has kind of sucked. Um, it, it, and it's also been amazing how far Intel has been able to push their 14 nanometer process. Uh, just last year, they were still co not competing in price points, uh, obviously. They were getting roasted there as well, literally and physically. Uh, but they had, core for core, you could take a uh, 9900K and basically go tit for tat with a 3700X or a 3800X, and their process technology was twice the size. So even though, when their 10 nanometer super fin comes out, and that's what this is gonna be built on. I think I, I don't even think I said that at the beginning of the video, very important factor there. This will be Intel's first 10 nanometer desktop processor. It is very exciting. It will be uh, built on the refined 10 nanometer super fin process. So it is more efficient. It is, uh, they're getting better yields with it. It's clocking higher and from what I'm hearing, Intel's 10 nanometer is going to be a really good process. It's going to be a big deal and I'm excited for it. Let me know how much y'all are excited for it. Uh, and that's about, that about wraps this video up guys. Just please make sure each and every one of y'all get subscribed. Uh, we appreciate everything so much. All the support from all of y'all. Uh, you just don't know how much it helps, but thank each and every one of you again for watching the channel and I'll see all of y'all soon.